My name is Samuel. I've tried a variety of part-time jobs to earn a few bucks while studying. Like the pizza delivery guy. It was late one summer night, just past midnight, and I had to deliver my last order to a rich neighborhood nearby. When I got there, the house seemed old and there were no lights on inside. I rang the bell attached to the fence pillar a few times, but no one replied. I pushed the gate, it was unlocked, and I walked through the garden up to the porch. I found a note attached to the door. It said, the door is open, enter, and leave the pizza on the table. I hesitantly made my way inside. The hallway was dark, and I couldn't find the light switch, so I used my phone light. There was a table in the middle of the living room, and it had some money on it. I put the pizza box down and quickly pocketed the money. Suddenly, the door slammed shut behind me, startling me. I shone the torch towards the entryway, but there was nobody there. I ran a few steps forward and pulled on the door, but it was somehow jammed and I couldn't open it. I called for somebody in the house, but apparently I was alone. In the distance, a phone could be heard ringing from across the room. I picked it up. A man's voice said, If you don't do what I tell you, you'll be dead soon. What kind of a joke is this, dude? Let me out, I replied. Go to the kitchen, he said and hung up. I tried to dial 911, but my phone had no signal. I picked up the other phone, but it was locked. I tried to open the windows, but to my horror, each window had old rusted nails hammered through the frame, keeping them firmly shut. Using my flashlight, I slowly walked through a corridor into the kitchen. That place was a dump. There were no signs of life. On the table, there was a timer and a note read, that's how long you have left in this world. That scared me, so I began searching for something to use as a weapon, but I found nothing. I opened another door, and I was immediately hit by a terrible smell. It was a bathroom. I bumped into the bathtub, filled to the brim. As I stood, staring in confusion, something bobbed to the surface. That's when I realized the bath was full of what seemed like human bodies. I threw up my guts, covering the floor as I realized that this was not a joke. I noticed a small vent above the bathroom mirror. I clambered on top of the sink and began to shout, hoping to get somebody's attention. I stopped as a beeping sound began from outside. It was the timer in the kitchen. A dragging sound grew louder, and the door eased open with a creak, and I saw a man standing in the dark, an axe in hand. He smiled as he said, your time is over. The man was huge. I knew I had no chance of overpowering him. I spun around and backed off into another room. I ended up in a cluttered room full of things, and I began throwing anything at him, all that I could possibly reach. I got him right in the head with a lamp. He closed his eyes and stopped for a moment. He then smiled and kept coming forward. He eventually cornered me, inhaled deeply and raised his axe. Without thinking, I took a piece of the broken lamp and slashed it across his cheek. As he recoiled, I slipped under his arms and rushed to the hallway. The door was unlocked now, so I got out and ran to my bike. I sped off as fast as I could without so much as looking back for fear of seeing him still chasing me. When the police arrived, the man was gone. Turns out, that house had been closed off to the public for the past 20 years, and someone was using it to lure people and use them for their own entertainment. Thank God I got out of that place. Right before he could slice me like a piece of pizza. I liked all my teachers back in high school. Almost all of them. 
There was this math teacher who was incredibly boring. We fell asleep like five minutes after his lesson started and we couldn't wait for his lesson to end. One day, it was a Tuesday morning and we had a math lesson. But when the door opened, a stranger came in the class. He said his name was Brooks and he would be a substitute for the math teacher for a few weeks. He began writing some equations on the blackboard we had already learned the year before. I pointed that out and he got very angry and told me to shut up, giving us a serious look. It was more like a warning not to mess with him. But he also looked funny with his old plaid suit and his nervous tics, and when he put the chalk and the eraser in his pockets, we all laughed. He banged his fists on the desk and turned purple with rage. Then he stared at me as though I was the only one laughing. That wasn't a good start indeed, and every time he talked to the class, he kept glaring at me. A few days later, I was practicing in the chemistry lab before the weekend break. That evening, I had to go to a party with my classmate, Nicole, who left with the other students when the bell rang. I stayed a little longer because I had to take some notes from my locker that I needed for the next week's lesson, and I decided to sort out the mess in there. Then I closed the locker and… I saw Mr. Brooks standing behind the closet door. I said hello to him and tried to leave, but he stepped in front of me, grinning. I moved aside and tried to pass him, but he moved to block the way again and again. I shook my head, questioning him, and he just kept staring at me. Then I took my cell phone out to call my friend, but he grabbed my arm and made me drop everything on the floor. I spun around and ran back to the chemistry lab while he was shouting, Who's laughing now? I cried for help, but there was nobody left in the school that late, and Brooks knew it. I ran around the tables back and forth while he chased me frantically. He began to throw stuff on the floor, trying to block me, and I eventually found myself up against the wall. He grabbed my arms tight with crazy eyes and said, Now I'm gonna teach you some manners. But right at that moment, my friend and two security guards walked in the door. As Mr. Brooks saw them, he composed himself, pretending nothing happened. But a guard yelled at him to get away from me and asked him to follow them. My friend told me that after she answered my phone call, she heard me screaming and realized I was in danger. The teacher had already been kicked out from two private schools in the past for mistreating students, but he didn't get charged due to a lack of evidence. But this time there were witnesses. That's why Mr. Brooks will never teach in another school ever again. It was the beginning of the summer sales, and I spent all day looking for bargains and something nice to buy. I hadn't done it for a long while, and buying something for me made me feel better. But I had this strange feeling, like I was being watched. That evening, I had to take the train to get home, while my friend lived just a few blocks away from the shopping area. My friend walked me to the station and I gave her my shopping bags because I had to use the restroom. After being out all day on the street, I really needed to go, and so I had no choice at that point but to use the public restroom. It seemed clean at least, and large with many stalls. I chose a stall, I closed the door, and I sat down. Then I saw a shadow moving outside and I heard a strange noise. Something like a mouth snapping. And as always in public restrooms, the lock on the door was broken. Then suddenly, a figure seemed to be getting close to my door. And I saw a man trying to look in the space between the door and the stall. I immediately shout, go away you pervert! He moved away. But he came back and grabbed my bag hanging from my knee. I held on to the bag as hard as I could, but the shoulder strap broke and he pulled the bag away. I got out quickly and ran after him. I saw him hiding behind the last two stalls, 
but when he saw me, he pulled out a knife and started walking towards me. I moved quickly and rushed to the exit, but the door was locked. Luckily, it had a twist lock and I could turn it, and I did. I ran, screaming as fast and as loud as I could to get someone's attention. My friend heard me screaming and ran up to me. I told her that I had my bag stolen with all my money, credit cards, and cell phone with tons of pictures inside. The police arrived quickly and searched the area, the maintenance doors, everywhere, but the thief was long gone. The agents kindly walked me to the platform to make sure I took the train safely. When the train started moving, I immediately felt safe, and I leaned out of the window to say hello to my friend by waving my hand. Since then, I never went to a public restroom alone. I like to draw, and since many people have always wanted to see my artwork, I figured it only made sense to promote myself via social media platform. But it wasn't until I had started picking up a speck of recognition on the internet that my troubles began. I started getting more messages and likes from the few fans I quickly made. But this one guy was particularly odd and he talked in a very possessive manner. I thanked him for his appreciation, but acknowledging him in the first place seems to be what made everything even worse. Until I called him out for acting like a weirdo and said I wouldn't speak with him anymore if he didn't stop. But soon I started to have multiple people telling me about these horrifying versions of my drawings. He was turning my art into disgusting stuff with signs and cuts all over. I nearly vomited from the sight of a few of the images, and I quickly removed the creep even though he had stopped speaking to me. After a few weeks, I received a couple of offers to have my art commissioned, and so I had an interview with a prestigious downtown art studio. I left the house at around 6pm a few days later and made my way to the art studio just about a 20 minute walk from my house. It wasn't what I expected at all. It was a home office, but the signs looked official so I knocked, and an average looking man opened the door. We went up to the first floor where he said his study was, and we sat down at his desk. I gave him some of my drawings to look through and he slid me a folder of his own work. But to my horror, when I opened the folder, I saw those same terrifying images I'd seen online. I leapt backwards out of my seat in panic. He glared up, his hands on the desk smiling, and said, Soon you will join my art collection too. Then he showed me a cutter. I sprinted out of the room, but he tackled me to the floor near the stairs. We both struggled and ended up rolling down the stairs together. He cracked his head hard and was dazed on the ground. I got up and opened the door, but he grabbed my leg and pulled me back. I kicked him in the head and he finally let go. I ran out of the house to a neighbor and called the police. They came and searched the home, but there was no trace of that man. They told me the house was supposed to be vacant, as the previous owner had recently died. One year has passed, but I live in fear every day knowing that the creep could still be following me online, hiding behind anonymity.